In this video, we're going to build one of these crates. This is a medium resolution crate, so you can see that we've actually got some detail here. This isn't based on normal maps or bump maps or even displacement maps. This is actual geometry we've got here with these recesses and the bolts here, their actual geometry as well. So let's use a simple cube to start this off and we'll stick with the default here. The size that you work at is up to you depending on the scene you're working in. But I'll stick with the default 200 by 200 by 200. Uh, for a primitive cube. Now you can go in here in the attributes manager and add yourself some segments and if you were going to make something made of say wooden planks then you might decide to increase the polygon count across here the different segments but we're not going to do that we're going to keep everything at one. I'm going to hit the C key or you can use this icon up here top left to make this into a polygon object and you'll notice that the icon in the object manager changes from this primitive cube as soon as I hit the C key into a single polygon. Let's rename this as well while we're here to crate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that under filter I've got grid turned on. You can see grid there is checked. So when I go into a different view, and I'm going to use probably all, all of the views for doing this project, you can see that the grid is there. Now at the moment we've got two squares wide on our grid for the cube. Now to do this properly I want to zoom in until I get 10 for each of those cubes. So there you can see it just divided. I'd probably go a bit closer if I need to. That's fine. Now with the crate selected, I'm going to change to polygon mode. I'm also going to hit P and I'm going to turn on enable snapping. And what I want to do is I want to use the knife tool to cut across the bottom and across the top. And then I'm going to make some more cuts to do the diagonals. And then that will leave us with the, the four indentation polygons which we can extrude afterwards. Now the knife tool you can access by hitting K or you can right click and you can go down to knife there and that will work in polygon mode. It won't work if you've got a spline selected or if you're in object mode because the knife doesn't work on those. Now what we want to do is look in the attributes manager here. We're going to use a line so we can just cut one line across and it will be a single cut. We're not going to restrict selection because we're not really using selections. Now I don't want to create any engons. I prefer working with three and four sided polygons. It makes your mesh much cleaner. And I don't want to use visible only. I want the cuts to go all the way through. And one thing that I will mention here is we'll have to go back into our perspective view at some point because sometimes when you make a cut all the way across, it doesn't happen on the other side, even though you've got visible only unchecked. For the cuts, I'm going to use two of these grid squares and with snapping on, as we did earlier, I can click once, drag across, and we've got our first cut. I'm going to click there, drag across. Now you can either, I'm going to do the uprights here as well, you can either click, let go, and then you can see the cursor snaps to either the edges, the polygons, or the grid squares, like that, and that works fine. Or you can click and drag straight down, or around and the snapping will work either way. So you work whichever way is more comfortable for you. Now, from this corner here, I'm going to go two squares up like so and snap to that point there. And you can see that this has automatically turned things into triangles for me. Now I'm just hitting space twice to reset my tool. And you can tell hitting space flips between the last two selections in your recently used tools. I'm going to do the same again, like so, and cross there, and one more, cross there, like so. Now, what we need to do is go into our perspective view here, just spin this round and make sure that we've got our two cuts on the other side. And we can neaten this up a little bit if you want to, you don't have to, but if you're finding this is a bit of an eyesore, you can actually go in and you could merge all of these polygons around the edge. I'm not going to because I don't think it's necessary and I think it can leave unwanted points which takes longer to clean up than any problems it might solve. And for this particular example we're not really going to have any problems with these points and polygons. So now we're going to go into the right and left views. You can do it in either and we're going to go back into the knife tool and do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to do my uprights and you'll see that these horizontal cuts went all the way through because I extended the knife cut when we were doing this in the, the front and back view. So instead of starting here and snapping from that line, like so, I started 
further out and still using the grid as a guide so we know everything is equal and that means that that cuts all the way across. So now I'm going to go do my verticals like so. I am just clicking and dragging here. And that's all done and we'll need to go into perspective view. Just make sure that this went all the way through just in case it hasn't. And that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to leave the top square. If you'd rather have the kind of triangular shapes to extrude, then go ahead and do exactly the same and you would do it from the top view. Go until your grid turns into 20 for this particular example. And then you would just cut across the same as you did before, bearing in mind that that will do the bottom too. And you don't necessarily want any extra cuts under here because that's geometry that you're not going to use. Okay, so hit the space bar to drop that tool. And I'm just going to go in very quickly with the live selection tool, which is this one here. And holding shift, I'm just going to select the polygons that I want to be recessed. Just spin the model around like so to get to the other side. Make sure you get the two polygons where it's made triangular polys for us with the knife tool. Like that. And I'm also going to recess this big polygon on the top. Okay, so they're all now selected. And what I'm going to do is just hit the D key, which is for extrude. You can also access that just by right clicking and choosing extrude. And I'm going to click with the left mouse button and drag to the left. And this will recess these inwards to about minus seven. Now, if you have a particular distance you want to or need to go, then you can type this in the offset. So I'm just going to type minus seven in there, hit return. And then if I drop the tool, we've got that minus seven. Now, I'm going to just go back and explain one more thing here. Where we've got these two polygons together, I'm going to hit D. We want to make sure that these go exactly kind of perpendicular to the surrounding polygons. So when we click and drag, these go back perfectly flat. Now, if preserve groups isn't checked, you'll find that you get this weird polygon between the two. So if you find that you're extruding things and you've got two polygons next to each other and you get this random result, then it's just worth checking that you've got preserve groups checked there. OK, so this is our basic framework all done already and the next thing to do is add the bolts and the bolts pretty easy we're going to use a standard sphere we're going to decrease the size down to let's say about five centimeters and we'll go for six segments i'm just going to hide the crate for a second from the renderer and the editor view i'm going to hit s with the sphere selected just so we can see a bit more clearly what we're going on in this video now with render perfect selected you'll find that even though in the viewport this looks very angular, when you render, it's rendering perfectly because we've told it here that this is actually a complete smooth sphere and we might be using this lower resolution for the segments just to keep our viewport fast. Now, we want to use this as a, a nut and bolt. So uncheck that and under standard, I'm going to go down to hemisphere because we only need half of this and you'll see that the axis point is at the bottom of that hemisphere, which means that we can take our scale tool. Now I'm just going to make this editable as well. And in object mode, I'm going to shrink this down on the Y axis. And then I'm going to increase the scale of this ring of edges here. So this flattens off the shape and makes it a bit more like the head of a bolt. So go into edge mode and hit UL, which is loop selection. Select those there. You can see that one click just selects all the way around. Hit the T key, and I'm just going to use this handle here in the corner between the X and the Z axis, and that will help stretch things out. Now, if you want to make this exactly the same as the bottom, you can either type it in manually because we know that we had a five centimeter radius, or you can just go into the top view and you can eyeball it like so, and that will be fine for me. I think I might increase the height as well. So for doing that, I'm going to go into point mode. I'm going to use the rectangle selection. And I'm going to grab all of the points apart from this bottom edge and just lift them up. 
you need to make sure that only select visible elements is unchecked. So when you select from the front or the side view, you're actually getting everything. Uh, and that's an easier way of doing it than it is to go into the perspective view and try and pick them all one by one. It's much quicker just to use a rectangular selection or a lasso and just select them that way and raise them up. I've got grid snapping still on if I want it. I'm actually going to turn it off. I don't need it anymore. Um, that will help to grab the selection. And it doesn't use the points of that selection. It uses the center of the selection. So where you can see the axis band there, that's what will snap to the grid, not any of these points. So we've got our first bolt done. And the best way of getting these all over the crate, which we can now bring back, I'm just going to hit H to bring everything in the scene into the viewport, is to use a MoGraph cloner. So I'm going to use a cloner, add that to the scene, make the sphere, which we'll now call bolt, rename that, child. And in the cloner, we're going to choose a grid array and we're going to use three by one by three. Now, whichever face you choose to work on first is fine. Um, the, the method will be exactly the same. I might even choose three by one. Let's do a front face first, just so I can show you more clearly what's going on. So this is our X axis, the red axis there. So we're looking at the front and the Y axis is the green. So we can bring these forward and we can bring them forward until you can just see half of them. Now, if you remember, this crate was 200 by 200. And the center point of these bolts is now going to be 200 by 200 by 200, which means they're going to line up perfectly on the face, but they're going to be just a little bit too big on the X and Y. So just make sure they're perfect by going into the coordinate manager here and just making sure they are actually 100 or minus 100 on the Z axis. So they're sitting perfectly on the face. And we just need to bring in the size of that cloner object. And we're going to go to 185. I think is perfectly right. My maths is correct. Let's look at this in the front view or the top view, either will work. So we want this line here, the center, to be lined up with the center of this bar. So this bar here, if I go into a line view, we want this to be lined up in the center of this strut or bar of our cube. So this is my front view. And at the moment, this is kind of the bottom right-hand corner of the crate. And I want this line here be lined up with this grid line here, which is the slightly darker one you can just make out. So I'm just going to use the, the measurements here for the size for that. And we can sell that's 180. Now we could have worked this out just by knowing that our cube, our original cube, which is the crate was 200 by 200, and that we'd done two grid squares for the cuts, uh, which would mean 180. And we can do that because we know it's all cubic. We can do that for the uprights. We need to do that for the y-axis as well. You can see now that's right. Everything looks good. All we need to do is make sure that these are rotated in the right position. So go into the transform tab of the cloner. And what we need to do is just rotate these by 90 degrees in the pitch, like so. And go to the top view and just make sure that they're intersecting very, very slightly with the crate itself so they're not kind of floating on the front. Okay, so this is one face. Let's call this face bolt. Now what we want to do is duplicate this. So I'm just going to make sure you're in object mode. I'm just going to control click and drag to make another face. And I'm going to make this the opposite face, which will be around the other side. And in heading, I'm just going to type 180. So that's flipped around completely. And for the position, I'm just going to take the minus away from the Z because we know that this is cubic and it's in the center of our scene. So if I remove that, it should go exactly around to the other side and it has like so. Now, again, because this is cubic, we can take both of these, control click and drag, and then we can just spin them 90 degrees. And we now have 
all four sides sorted out for the bolts. And we could take one of those and we can make this for the top. So let's just control click and drag. I'm not going to worry too much about the rotation in that axis, but the pitch needs to be 90. Just make sure that they're the right way up and it doesn't need to be at minus 90. Which it does, so just double check that as you go. And you can also see that this is all in the wrong place on the x-axis, so this needs to be bang on central. And it also needs to be raised up. This is going to be by 100 as well because it's a cube, like so. You also see that we've got one extraneous bolt right in the middle on the top there. Now, there's a way you can do this, uh, which will stop this from being a cloner, um, but it's probably the quickest way. So just hit C with the cloner selected, and you can see that all these bolts now are polygon objects underneath a null. And we're going to just take one of them, that one. Let's just take the live selection tool, grab that one there, delete it, and we're done. So let's just neaten everything up. I'm going to take all these bolts and I'm going to drop them as children of the crate. So now when you've got this crate in the scene, it's literally just there on its own and you've got everything collapsed underneath it. If you need to go in there, you can, but it keeps your hierarchy a bit more easy to navigate. Now there's one last thing that I would probably suggest doing here, and that's just to bevel some of these edges. So I'm gonna take the crate and I'm gonna go into edge mode and I'm going to use the loop select, so UL. You need to make sure you're at the right part of the object to select all the way around. And it's these recesses that I'm looking to do. So I'm going to select there, shift select, get all of these edges. And just navigate your way around the object, making sure you've got all the ones you want, just to give a micro bevel to. A micro bevel is really important when rendering because they really help the lighting in your scene to kind of get the catch lights and the highlights. See a missing edge section there. Final selection. I think that's all of them. Okay, so edge beveling, very similar to beveling a polygon and I'm just zooming in quite close here so you can see the effect of it. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go down to bevel. Now you can control everything using the attributes manager. Um, I prefer to do it interactively and just to click and drag in the viewport. Again, like with the extrusion earlier, you can type in specific numbers. Uh, if you want to, I'm not going to. I just like to click and drag and eyeball it and see which looks most pleasing to me. Okay, so I'm going to drop that selection now. Hit H. We have now got this cube in our scene. Now, with that bevel done, you might find, depending on the settings you've used, that you get this slight smoothing. It looks almost like a gradient on some of the polygons. Um, and all that is, is the fong angle. Just trying to smooth things that you wouldn't necessarily want smoothed. Now, I'm just zooming in here to try and explain what this is doing. And the Fong angle takes the angle between two polygons and depending on how you have it set, it tries to smooth that off so that the render looks a bit smoother. And it means that, for example, the bolt heads here, even though they're angular here, the Fong angle will help to kind of make them appear smoother than they really are. And the Fong angle is in the Fong tag here, which is attached to the crate you can see that we've got a fong angle of 80. Now, as I reduce that angle, we'll see these just turn into flat polygons again, which is much better for what we want. There you go. You can see that happened at about 37, 38 degrees. And this should now look much more as you would expect.